Hey guys, I am Stephanie and this is Deliberately Creative. I'm doing a little behind the scenes, uh, just working some stuff out in my studio. And I don't know if this is even going out, so who knows if anybody is even going to see it. My encoder is saying that it's live. It says I've got good health, but I am not seeing anybody showing up yet. Oh, it says there's 14 people watching now, but I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to check really quick on another page to see if I can see my live stream. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be good. Hey guys. Wow, we've got people in here. Now I don't know if anybody is seeing me. So I am really quick just checking on another page to see if I've got a live stream actually showing or if you guys are just, here we are. Oh, yay. Okay, we are live. Thank you, Autumn. Hey, Autumn, uh, is it okay if I make you a, um, what do I want to say? I want to make you a moderator. Is that okay? How about this? I'll make you a moderator, Autumn, and uh, then we'll see <laughs> if you said yes or no. Yay! Hey guys, I am so excited. What I'm going to be doing is you see this butter, you see this butterfly right here, and that pretty kind of soft muted background. I want to try and hey, thanks, Catherine. Nice seeing you live. Welcome to Tennessee, and oh my gosh, yay! <laughs> All right, I'm doing this totally on my own in my studio right now. Um, my husband's at work, so this will be a surprise to him too. So when Mark Mark from MWB Arts uh, Creative Journey sees this that I went on live, he'll probably pop in here at some point. <laughs> Yay, so that butterfly, the background, what I want to do is figure out with, here, let me uh, click to a different screen. Let's click to the Did that work? Okay.
Okay, so you guys said we have camera here. We have sound here. Okay, I'm getting confused now. I'm sorry, guys. I really was hoping that I would do it. Well, I could stop the stream. Okay. Okay, sound is here. Okay, sound is on this one. So what we're gonna do, hold on for a second. We're going to, we're gonna do a little tricky thing here. I'm going to add a camera on this screen because I can. And we'll just, we'll just do it from this screen. Doing magic. I'm doing some magic. Let's see if we can get it. Whoops, I'm almost there. I'm backwards though. Damn it. That's why this is a behind the scenes because I'm actually going to, I'm recording this whole thing and I can trim it and make it into a real video. <laughs> All right, so now we have, there we go, we're gonna do it. All right, so now I am going to pull that one down below one, maybe. All right, we're gonna do this butterfly. I'm going to turn my image off because we really don't need my picture. There we go. <laughs> and we'll have that little bit. So now you guys can see this background. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine. I appreciate that. Yay, we're working. We're on. And it's only 10 minutes in. I hope people, you know, stick around and hang out with us. Again, it's, this is just a, a playtime. We're not doing, I mean, I'm working on getting a, I'm working on, whoop, there we go. I am working on getting this set up so I can make my final project. So we're going to play. I have my white is the flow acrylic artist loft. And then I have some random paints here. I've got the Deco Art Americana Satin, the Deco Art Americana True Ochre, the Folk Art Pearl Lemon Silk, and the Deco Art Americana Burnt Sienna. And the paints are already mixed up, so we'll be able to get playing here. Well, hey, Mark. <laughs> nice to see you. All right, so what I have here are just some plain panels. I'm just going to, these are eight by 10. Um, art alternatives from, I picked them up for a buck a piece on an amazing sale. And the only other thing I want, and since I don't have my face camera on, I can slip around a little bit here. I need some little cups to set this up on. There we go. All right. Hey guys, now that we're actually working, if you want to share this with uh, your friends on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you happen to share things that I'm live, click that uh, share button right below the video and go ahead and share it out there. We're having fun now. Hey, tell Greg Joy hello. Thank you, Mark. All right, so this background, if you look at that little picture on the side there, there's sort of a cream color and a brown and a black and that burnt sienna color. I'm kind of making it work. I'm not, um, I wanna see if 
I can do this. There it is. Okay, get me back. I want me back. <laughs> it's because I want to talk to you and, and I like having my face so it feels more like we're in the studio together talking. So I want to try and get that sort of modeled background like and share and hey guys if this is your first time here go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go up after the video's over please leave me a comment and let me know if you like this type of a video as long as the sound is working <laughs> and i understand if i got some thumbs down because of sound were not working to begin with that's what happens but remember, this video is a behind the scenes, work out the kinks, and have some fun, and hang out. Click the like and the share, and now I'm going to sit back and enjoy. Thank you so much, Winona. That is awesome to hear. Hello, Granzy Idaho. Uh, Ida. Ah, oh, Granzy. So that's your, that's your grandma name, isn't it? That's a nice one. I like that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just start trying this out. We're going to do this first panel as just a dirty pour. And then there might be a little bit of working on it afterwards. So I'm putting some white. There will be a little bit of white and maybe some of this true ochre. Now the true ochre and the sienna are really thin compared to the white and the lemon yellow. The lemon yellow, any of the pearls are really really thick. It doesn't matter if I mix it exactly the same as everything else. It is really thick. Now I did put a little bit of the black in there. A little more of the sienna and the white and the ochre. So I probably only got about an ounce here. I need a little bit more. But I want to save some paint to be able to do the others. All right. So this, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm working at um, trying to make this all work, work well. The, uh, I have a green screen behind me. So here, show you behind the scenes. There's the green screen. It's on a curtain wire. And the camera that I have, which is the Logitech um, 922, it actually comes with a green screen um, ability in it. And then the OBS software that I'm using for broadcasting has a green screen filter in it also. So that's how I'm making that work. If anybody was interested <laughs> in the tech side of it. Let's see. I think... We are going to do this kind of like a like one of those uh, tree ring type pour. So that way the colors get sort of swirled. I'm just going to, ooh, that's really pretty. Okay, that really, that almost looks like wood. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to pour to this corner and I'm putting my hand here to use kind of like a stop and then we'll go back to the center and let it drift down. We're going to come down to this bottom corner here since it's already off center. And I'm just going to Get it down to here. Ooh, a video showing how to do the setup for a video. That would be interesting. Now I, I rotated the canvas panel and I'm going to pour straight down this way. I think that it, this is going to be a little bit too dark for what I wanted to do, but maybe not. I may just have to make a brighter colored butterfly. And now let's see if I can get this to pull down and across without making too many jagged lines. And then 
actually. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I had another camera set up to go here and um, that was a side view camera. So when I'm tipped up like this, you'd be seeing it really well. But that didn't get set up here. Ooh, this is looking really pretty though. I like this color combination. <laughs> I like how warm it is. And we'll just touch and touch. And now I'm going to tap. And I hope that's not causing any problems for the microphone sound. So one of the things with, ooh, that's pretty. I need to just put a little bit of pink back here on the corner. One of the things with this particular shape, oh, that's going to be nice because that gives us that very out of focus. It is thick. Um, two of the colors are really thick. Two of the colors are really thin. Um, the If you look in here, you see how it's the yellow keeps thickening up on me. I've added water to it afterwards. After I did my, this is like six parts pouring medium to one part, um, six parts pouring medium to one part paint on the lemon pearl. I, I don't know. Here, let me just uh, grab a towel. Oh, sorry. One of the things, again, about doing this behind the scenes, <laughs> You guys get to see me kind of go off screen every once in a while. Oh, I'm sorry. I I probably stepped away from my camera or away from my microphone uh, when I backed up. So let's see here. Okay, I've got the mic turned way up now. So hopefully the sound is coming through better. All right. So welcome everybody that's here. I appreciate you being here. Um, just, there's always problems with yellow fading away when drying. There is that, but I, I'm using the yellow more like a cream in this. So I think it's going to hang out. And yes, I have increased my volume. So let me know. Yes, it is. That's good. Okay, good. I'm glad that that's working better. So I am going to set this to the side. That just looks like a beautiful, whoop, get off of there. Get those cups off of there. <laughs> that just looks like a beautiful piece of wood. I can see why they call it a tree ring. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad the sound is better. So I'm going to set this over to the side and then we'll play with another one. And I'm just going to put these cups back on here. Wipe my hands off again. <laughs> See, I don't keep changing my gloves. I just wipe my hands off on an old towel. Ah, I actually have put all of the camera information, whoops, sorry. <laughs> I have put all of the camera information in the more information below the video and the microphone information. And I even have listed the PTZ, uh, PZT camera, which is the Pan, PTZ, Pan Tilt Zoom. Um, it's an expensive camera, so I'm not too worried. I could, I could go ahead and get that set up so that we can see it. I will add that one in here. We've got that listed in the more information below also. It does kind of look like a yellow rose. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we're adding black magic device, adding the camera. Okay. Whoop. <laughs> okay. We didn't need that much of me. Okay. So now we have this more of a side view camera. And this one has a, it's my robo cam. Oh, 
over. So we'll see. And I'll just move over just a smidge. There we go. How's that? Hello, Rebecca from Myrtle Beach. All right, guys. Uh, so now, if you are new here, go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I do these super secret fun live shows and, uh, and any other time that I release videos. I also share information and behind the scenes pictures on my community tab. So uh, you would get a notification that there was a community post when I do that also. I do uh, share a lot of things on Instagram um, that are behind the scenes too. And uh, my Facebook page, Deliberately Creative on Facebook. All those links are down below in the more information box. Commercial done. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do this again, but this time... How would you guys like to see this done? Would you like to see it done in um, like four puddles and then moving those puddles around? Would you like to see it done in stripes and then we can swipe through it? All right. Hello, Jacques from Ontario. Aquatic Plant Savage, thank you so much for welcoming people. I appreciate it. Judy Lee from Boston. Cold and snowy in Iowa with SK Donor, one. Danielle, Danielle still in Pennsylvania. Wonderful, wonderful. So happy to see you guys. This is so much fun. You know, I, like I said, this I'm just in my studio behind the scenes. We're not, it's not scripted. <laughs> As the people who were here for the first nine minutes know, it's not scripted. <laughs> Stripes and swipe. Stripe, swipe, stripe, swipe. Messy pour, stripe, swipe, love swipes. Okay, well, I guess we will do a stripes and swipe. So, but I think one of those stripes is going to be the leftover messy pour. We can take care of you too. So I think the messy stripe, ooh, let's see. If I'm, I want to put a little bit of white up here at the top so that when it hits up here, it has some place. And yes, my paint is thick. I tend to work thicker because then I don't seem to lose as much. There we go. <laughs> I'm flinging these cups around. And some of them are staying stuck. <laughs> All right. So now you guys are starting to, you get to see a little bit of how I work in the behind the scenes here when I'm doing my own pours at home. Well, at home, I'm in my home. But when I'm doing pours for my YouTube videos, I tend to work like this. I'll do two or three different pours and try and come up with ideas for things. I want to make sure that I have enough colors on here. So enough paint on. So the white I'm putting down so that I have something to pull through. And I think I'm going to do this. Mm, what am I going to pull with? What am I going to swipe with? Should I swipe with a wet paper napkin or a piece of cardstock? So we'll have, we, we've got a choice of something that's sort of wet and floppy that can sort of pull through and might grab a little bit more, or we can pull through with the piece of cardstock, which is firmer and, um, actually kind of pulls the paint harder, uh, pulls the paint harder, kind of pulls the paint harder, pulls the paint with more of an edge force, more like a, uh, scraper does. So wet napkin. I've got my first one, wet paper napkin. Um, I am going to have to, you know, I said wet paper napkin. So now I have to go grab a wet paper napkin. I'll be right back guys. Let's see how quick I can do this. Okay, how, how was that? 
which gives more cells, you know? Since I am working, the only thing that's causing cells in my paints are the density differences. So we've got some, some good density differences in the paints between the really thick white and pearl yellow, and then the thinner black and brown and uh, ochre. So I'm not sure which one would give more cells. To, I, I've not ever done the wet paper towel swipe. So I was thinking, do that. And then, you know, I, I have another canvas over here that's one that I painted on that I can just pour right over the top of. And that might be fun for some people to see too, is just pouring over the top of an old painting because sometimes you don't like your old paintings. So how's that? I'm okay. Paper towel. Good thing. I went and grabbed the paper towels. <laughs> so we now have white on here. Shift over slightly. And I am going to put, let's see, I'm kind of looking at my, looking at my little picture there of the butterfly and that background. It seems to be darker at the bottom. So I'm going to put this mixture of paint down here. And then I am going to give it another stripe of a bit of white. You know, because this is, this is kind of how I do this. And then I want some of the black down here, but not a lot, not a lot. Black likes to take things over and a little bit of this other, the burnt sienna brown. Hey, Tina, you have a few old paintings that you don't care for too. Yeah, that's, it's one of those things that, let's see here. I'm working my way farther and farther over on my table, but it's backwards to my face camera. So yeah. <laughs> now I want this to be lighter as it goes up and away. So we're going to have more of the yellow and the ochre. And I don't care if I'm dripping some in random places. This is, there's, I'm hoping that I'm getting enough paint. Maybe a little bit more white. No silicone. Nope. I don't use silicone in any of my paintings. Um, my, my research has led me to believe the longevity of your paint is compromised if you put oil into your acrylic paints. And um, that's information that I'm getting from justpaint.org, which is the golden um, paint company. And um, they are so meticulous in their testing. So uh, if they ever say that you can put silicone in your paint, I would believe them. But right now they say, don't put oils in your paints because uh, the silicone and the different oils, coconut oil, any of those are going to create a barrier, just like it creates a barrier on your skin or on your hair from to keep things from sticking to it. It's gonna do that to your canvas. It's going to hit the canvas. And no matter how much oil you clean off the top of the canvas, there's still gonna be that thin micro layer that's underneath that will potentially, eventually, <laughs> potentially eventually cause your paint to lift off the canvas. And I don't ever want that to happen to somebody if they buy one of my paintings. So I choose for me not to use silicone oil, silicone or oil. So now I have a little cup of water right here. I have a paper napkin right here. I'm going to leave it double, I think. So when it's wet, I can pull it across. This is, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it now. Here we go. Wet paper towel. Going to set right on. Okay, let's hope for magic. Here 
we go. There we go. Ooh, there's a lot of paint on here. Okay. I think I want it to tip down. There we go. So now you can, ooh, that's cool. That side camera view, that's pretty cool. Floetrol is a painting medium. Um, it's used in the house painting industry to make paint go through sprayers more easily. So um, it is actually made for mixing with paint, but if you read the MSDS, the Materials Data Safety Sheet and information on it, it does say that the paints, the colors could fade after a period of time. Ooh. What do you think? Now, I didn't get a lot of cells here. And that's okay because I don't tend to go for cells. And if you look at the background, it doesn't have much in the way of bubbly cells. You see a wintry forest. I see all kinds of things here. This is cool. So if we leave it, whoops, leave it this way. It looks like I just splashed some water on it or something. I've got some extra, extra fast running paint going through. Okay, this is really cool. Oh, okay. So see, we are getting cells down here in this area or up here in this area. I've got a, something that was on there. So in Canada, um, check to see if you have something that's uh, by Wagner. It's called Easy Paint. Um, there's another product that I know a lot of people have found in Europe that's O-W-E-R-T-O-W-O-L or something like that. An old country town. Oh, that's, that could be interesting. So I'm going to pick up that paper napkin and set it off to the side here. Grab my towel and wipe my paws again. This is, this is so much fun. I just, I just cannot tell you how much fun this is. But a lot of you do pour already. I know you do because you're asking awesome questions. So now what I'm going to do is zoom in and focus right here and then I will pick up and move the canvas over there. So you see we do have some cells down in this area. I think what I want to do, I want to pour on that that old canvas, the one that I don't like very much. See, there's so many things you can see. Yeah, oh yes, brown at the bottom. That's, you notice I was turning it around already. The brown at the bottom. There we go. It's this would actually be really cool putting in a silhouette of, you know, maybe a, um, a tree line of silhouette using this brown and black and stuff down here at the bottom and having some trees that are going up. I like having things that I can do something else with. That is one of the cool things with these types of 
paintings. Make sure I don't have anything stuck to the bottom. All right. Yeah, but I didn't use any Floetrol in this painting or in this paint mixture. This paint mixture was done with the um, DecoArt pouring medium, which does similar things to Floetrol, but it's an actual art medium. So um, it's, it's made by the DecoArt company to work with their, to work with acrylic paints. I see I have kind of a, an extra bit of paint right in this, you see that, that ridge. So I was just trying to see if it would go that direction just a little bit. Town during sunrise. Down here at the bottom, that's where the town would be. Definitely. Either town during sunrise or there's an amazing, um, an amazing light show of something going on. Sunrise. Yeah. All right. I'm going to set this aside. So we've got two paintings. And I'm getting some pretty, pretty colors down here on the table too. And I'm working on top of a piece of uh, plastic coated paper. You could work on top of a shower curtain or a, a PVA type plastic. Um, the polyvinyl doesn't, the pl the acrylic paint doesn't stay stuck bonded to PVAs. So this surface on this plastic coated paper is a PVA. <laughs> hey, I'm so glad that I was able to surprise you. You know, I surprised myself too, because I don't, I have not done a lot of swipes just going to slide that over. Okay. This is the canvas that I was talking about, how it just didn't, just didn't speak to me. And then it got stuck to something and it's pulled some of the paint off. You know, I mean, it's, it's cool, but it's not something I would want to sell. And this was, um, house paints. House paints are acrylics. Um, even when they say latex on them at the, uh, at least the bare premium plus house paints are 100% acrylic. So, um, an acrylic paint can be poured right over the top of it and it's not going to cause any problem. So let's see here. I'm just, this one is a nine by 12. So a little bit bigger. Back to work, Mark. All right. <laughs> okay. So wet or dry when you paint over? Well, this is dry. This has been dry for probably four or five months. Um, <laughs> I'm going to snidge that over just a bit because I feel like I'm pushing off. So the, um, they were art alternatives, canvas panels and, um, eight by 10 size. They don't seem to warp really bad. They might bow a little bit as they dry, as the moisture goes through the canvas into the compressed cardboard stuff. But because I work fairly thin with my paints, I don't have a ton left on by the time I'm done doing my thing that I, I don't get the whoop, Warp, you know, that, that really tight bowed warping, I don't tend to get. So I hope that, uh, the only way to keep canvases from sticking, if you are stacking them together is to put something between them that the paint won't stick to. So, um, the silicone baking sheets, the paper baking sheets that you can get at, um, you know, from the grocery store, the, um, restaurant supply stores, those types of places, you can, uh, use the, those sheets, the paint won't stick to. So you, and they come in like, um, six, 
they're 12 by well they come in cookie sheet sizes so they come in quarter sheet sizes half sheet sizes and full sheet sizes um i don't know the size on the cookie sheets <laughs> i say this is uh 12 by 15. The sheets that I'm using right now to dry my paintings on are the sheets that I'm talking about. And if you don't mind me running out of the room, I can go grab another sheet and check. Yes, this one, this one was sort of an underwater scene. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's, it's fine, but I had got paint stuck to it. And so I think we're just going to pour on here. Hello, Millie, you made it. Yes, parchment paper, baking, baking paper, parchment paper, not wax paper, not wax paper. It has to be something. The baking paper is actually, uh, has silicone in it. The par baking parchment has a silicone in it or on it, which, um, in that instance, because it's dry and it's not, um, it's not imparting any of that into your paint, but it's keeping that barrier layer between the canvases so that the paints don't stick together. There we go. What kind of finish do you put on your dried artwork? I put um, different things. So I will use the uh, Gambar, which is a odorless um, oil-based odorless uh, varnish. You can use that. Um, it takes a while to dry because it is an oil base, but it is a varnish that goes on top of your painting. It never is underneath of your paint. So you can use oil on top of your acrylic after it's dry, but you never want to mix oil into your acrylic because it will cause it to not bond. How's that? Um, so I will use Gambar which is odorless and I can use it indoors anytime, but it takes about a week to dry. <laughs> but you can do it on any painting you can touch. It doesn't have to be fully cured to use the gambar on it. So that's a plus, but you still have to lay it flat and let it dry. The um, Krylon makes a UV protecting uh, clear spray that you can get in a... Um, gloss or in a satin. I really like those. Uh, you have to do that outside and it has to be above, I think, 50 degrees. So, and I have to leave it outside. So, because I can't bring it into my house when it is still wet and, or just barely dry because it has an odor to it that is really stinky. And I like it to be outside where it can air out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Autumn. I appreciate you reminding folks to like, share, subscribe, push that notification bell, and uh, make sure that you, you know, tell people, tell your friends. And if you're interested in any of the information about my cameras, my microphone, um, the basic setup, the materials I'm using in this painting, um, contact information, my website, my Amazon store, all of that stuff is down below the video in the more information. And if you're on a mobile device, right next to the title, there's a little black triangle. If you click that, it will drop all that information box down below, but it will also push your chat box way low too. So, you know, all right. I am going to paint on this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my artist loft paint and I'm going to give it uh, a couple squirts. <laughs> it's getting a little bit plugged up on that uh, squirty top. And then I am going to grab a, just a palette knife. I I don't need this to be super thick and I don't need it to be super wet all the time. But what I want to do is knock back some of that color that's on there. Especially up here at the top, which may end up being the bottom when we're done. And 
after I'm all done, I think I will probably give these sides a nice painting of a complementary color to the, or a color that goes with, not complementary, but a color that's in the painting will get painted around the sides also. So this one may end up being its own video, painting a, painting on a painting you don't like. I know I have one video that's already like that. Oh, if you are new and you haven't done any pouring yet and you want to find out information like about Floetrol and my, my view on silicone and using torches and different things like that and different ways to pour and tools that you need, click up in the iCard because I have put two of my playlists or actually one of my playlists, my beginners how to pour, kind of my 101 that takes you through the entire uh, set of things that I've done for pouring and all of that, uh, all in one place. The second card is my top 10 things that um, beginners need to know or anybody needs to know for uh, doing fluid acrylic pouring. So. There we go. And this is just a cheap dollar store palette knife. One thing with the dollar store palette knives, do not press hard. They will snap. I had one, had one of those do that to me just recently in a video that I had to cut out. That was a pain. Do I clean the canvas first? There's no need for me to clean the canvas because I did not varnish it and I do not use oils. So there's no nothing that's going to keep the paint from bonding. Great question though. All right. Okay, so there. So now we're going to do messy puddles. So I think maybe my puddles are going to be more stripy puddles. Let's see what we get. And I think I'm going to start putting a little bit more out there. This is going to be fun. You know, again, one of the awesome things about pouring is that you never know exactly what you're going to get. You are exploring. Oh, Jean, that is wonderful. And your husband thanks me. <laughs> Thank him for thanking me. I appreciate that. And now just... I'm not going to put any more black on after I do this. That's all the black that's going to go on. I'd like these colors. I, I have not used a lot of the browns and, and golds. I almost mixed up a metallic gold, but it was almost exactly the same color as the um, true ochre. So it was kind of like, yeah, okay. Let's see, can I get it there? Okay, we'll do it this way. Ha ha. And then slide down. I like to use my hand to stop some of the paint from going off. I may not have got enough paint on here. We'll see. We'll see. See, with uh, doing that paint across the, around the edges like I did, makes it awfully slippery. Trying to hold on to it. See if we can get that to puddle right there. I may 
splash some more paint on here. Because, you know, we're, we're pouring this paint over the top. And sometimes it's, ooh, we're getting some interesting effects here. You know what? Before I pour off too much more, I'm actually going to pour some more paint right down here and we'll let it drift up. Because or drift down. We could do it either way. So let's see what we get. Okay. So that's going back and forth, back and forth. We're going to pull it down. Come across. It's kind of fun, isn't it? To to just see. I'm gonna touch. See what things happen. But I kind of like. It's a little bit boring down here in this corner. Sorry, I'm... Oh, yeah, <laughs> you still have the side camera. <laughs> Even though I'm tipping really far over, you still have the side camera to be able to see. Excellent. Ooh, all right. So, things that are... Things that are happening here. We're getting some cells starting to pop through. The black is starting to settle backwards a little bit. This is definitely not going to be a background for a butterfly. I have a big hole right here though. So I'm just gonna go like this. Plop and drop. Right there is where that, that color went. And by tipping it and letting it drain a little bit, it kind of melds in and becomes part of the whole painting. I'm looking at this going, hmm, what do you guys think? Looks like a person on the right. Actually, what I see is a wolf sitting right here with his tail up and a paw. <laughs> Let's just sit that right there. See what happens. All right. Well, I think that this was an awesome, I'm gonna take my glove off now. Taking it off, all that drippy paint is inside the glove. And now I'm gonna take the other glove off, still holding on to that drippy glove and just pull it inside. There we go. And I only got a little bit of paint on my arm. And I am, I think I want to try painting that little butterfly on one of those backgrounds that we already, on that first background. I think the butterfly will be on the first or second background. This one is really interesting. It's almost, you know, into the night, into the, you know, Werewolves line dancing. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Werewolves line dancing. They're they're dancing around this um this crazy fire at night. With that night, you know, it's almost like a night sky with the flames coming up around it and embers popping. That could be really interesting. But I am starting to see, let's see if we can zoom in. 
Oh, there's the wolf. At least the wolf that I see. Okay, I'm going to get goop on my fingers now. You see that? butterfly definitely will be doing if you guys are interested in a live where where I just paint the butterfly live and talk as I'm doing it and just chat that would be awesome I plan on the butterfly becoming a uh, speed video that I will be playing on my Sunday relaxation time I I'm trying to come up with you know pretty things that take about 20 minutes of a speed video you know, usually there are two or three hours of painting <laughs> brought down to 20 minutes of speed video with a, um, just a music background. Um, you know, because sometimes you just want to watch something pretty happen and you don't need to listen to somebody jabber. So I like to talk and I like to, uh, to share, but sometimes I also like to be able to just go into myself and just paint. Uh, so if you think that, that uh, doing the video where I paint this pretty little butterfly doop, right there <laughs> live, um, sort of in a chatty type of stream that probably won't stay up for uh, forever because people get a little bored after about an hour of just me being chatty, <laughs> I, I start forgetting and losing track of what I'm talking about. So... Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you checking this out, hanging out here. I hope that you are uh, going to have a lovely rest of your day. Enjoy getting some paint out. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell, share the video and my channel with your friends, and keep an eye out for the uh, trim down version of these paintings as their own little videos so that way people who weren't here or who didn't want to sit through an hour video to see three paintings can just get the quick down and dirty version <laughs> excellent i am so glad and this time of day seems to be good for folks so me going up about 4 p.m uh, Pacific time sort of then flows over to the dinner time for the eastern side and as folks get home from work on the western side. So I hope this works for you guys. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you being here. Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here real soon. Bye-bye. Oh, for you guys still here. I will schedule next time so you'll know in advance that I'm doing this video. <laughs> Bye, guys.